Hello there good people and welcome back to the channel. The 2023 Lenovo Legion Pro 7 is amongst the most well received gaming notebooks this generation and for a good reason. We tested the RTX 4080 equipped SKU a while back and have been impressed with the performance and overall versatility of the 16 inch laptop. But since you can always get more, we will take a look at the most powerful notebook within Lenovo's Legion lineup today. And since all of the Pro 7s top out with a QHD screen and we really wanted to push the RTX 4090 in here to its limits, we also asked Lenovo to send over one of their 4K displays. So sit back, relax and get ready for some video games. And let's see if the upgrade to Nvidia's mobile flagship is worth the additional cost. All Legion Pro 7s come with Intel's i9-13900HX and in addition to the RTX 4090 mobile, our unit comes with 32GB of DDR5-5600 memory and two 1TB NVMe SSDs. Unfortunately, only one panel is available on the display side of things, which is a pretty bright 240Hz QHD Plus screen with a matte coating. The monitor we will be using for most of our tests today is the Legion Y32P. It's an absolute unit of a 31.5 inch display refreshing at a very snappy 144Hz. Since we already reviewed the 4080 SKU of the Legion Pro 7, I will not spend too much time on the chassis and port situation. So if you are interested into a more detailed look at what makes this one tick, please either watch our video or head over to our written reviews. I will link everything in the description below. In general though, the Legion is a very well-made notebook and it's built incredibly well. Some of you criticized Lenovo for removing some everyday creature comforts, like the fingerprint reader or the illumination above the ports on the backside. I must say I agree with the point that machines within this price category should have some form of biometrics, since the Legion does not even come with a Windows Hello webcam. I personally never missed the illumination and in general I also prefer this design over last year's Legion 7. Yes, there's a bit more plastic all around, and you could easily mistake this one for the mid-range Pro 5 lineup. But again, this one is built like a tank and still manages a somewhat subtle and professional design. The same holds true for the Y32P. It looks very clean for a gaming display and while the back feels a little plasticky, the stand itself is very sturdy and allows for flexible adjustments. I've been daily driving this combination for a few weeks now and during that I really came to love the Legion's port arrangement. It is not just the sheer amount of connectivity this one brings to the table, placement is also amongst the best layouts on the market right now. You can easily connect two displays, Ethernet and some USB hubs while still managing a clean setup since almost all of the bigger connectors are in the back, leaving the side USB ports for external hard drives, card readers or whatever else you need on a daily basis. The Y32P continues the trend of well thought through connectivity and comes with two HDMI 2.1s, DisplayPort 1.4, USB-C and audio combo port and two USB-As to use for your peripherals for example. The FreeSync Premium and G-Sync capable screen also comes with a KBM switch, so you can use two machines with the same mouse and keyboard. In the display department there is still not really something to complain about the Legion's QHD panel. But again, most competitors at least offer the option for a mini LED display or just some slightly better panels with higher contrast and wider color gamuts. Again, for all detailed measurements, please watch our review of the 4080 variant. The 4K panel in this one is a bit of a mixed bag to be quite honest. The subtractive impression is quite good and I like this one a lot for games and work, but our measurements reveal average numbers at best. While display brightness is less of a concern for stationary displays, around 250 nits might get you in trouble if you work or play in a very bright room and contrast is definitely way too low for any display in 2023. Color gamut coverage and color reproduction on the other hand are pretty alright for a gaming focused panel. And since Lenovo added an sRGB profile it is well suited for video color grading. If you have the chance to manually calibrating this one yourself, even at least semi-professional photo editing or graphic design work is easily possible as well. But with a 144Hz refresh rate, this hardly classifies as an office or work monitor. But the Y32P is laser focused on the gamers amongst you. Let's start with the bad news first though, we have been able to detect PWM. 
but at a very, very high frequency of 250 kHz, so it should hardly affect even sensible users in this regard. Unfortunately, the PWM frequency also messed up our grey to grey response time measurements. But 7 milliseconds for black to white will give you a good time and even the fastest shooters. Our subjective impression also left us quite impressed, and the large high res panel is well suited for all sorts of genres. Alright folks, let's finally get to performance. I will skip our usual CPU section almost entirely, since, well, it's an i9-3900HX and we already know this one quite well. If you want more details and all of our benchmark results, please check out our written review for the RTX 4080 SKU on our website. On the GPU side of things, the mobile RTX 4090 in our review unit is allowed the same 175W power target as its smaller sibling, so it will be very interesting to see how much more performance you will get out of the same form factor and cooling solution. Our synthetic tests left us a little worried to begin with. While the 4090 is of course not a bad performer, most competitors are faster, albeit in mostly larger chassis. The lead over the 4080 within the same machine is also just about 10%, which is quite the bummer considering you are paying about 20% more for the GPU upgrade. Our Blender results turn things around, and here you get almost exactly your money's worth. While just a few seconds on a single render do not sound like much, if you scale it up to much more complex projects, saving 20% of your render times can save you a lot of money. So let's see how this translates to games. If we would only look at our combined performance rating, you could easily think that the 4090 is just a cash grab and not worth the considerable upcharge at all. But keep in mind, these are older games tested at 1080p, so the fastest ADA mobile card can hardly stretch its legs here, since these games are much more CPU bound in general. The story changes drastically if we take a look at more recent games in higher resolutions. And here the RTX 4090 can show its smaller sibling where it's at, with performance improvements ranging anywhere from around 20% to even 30% in some titles. While you enjoy these beautiful benchmark results, please make sure to consider subscribing if you feel informed and entertained. It means a lot to us, and a like is of course always appreciated as well. So as you can see, the mobile NVIDIA flagship can easily drive a 4K display for competitive titles without a problem and with high frame rates. It gets to its limits though with very demanding story titles and struggles to maintain a smooth 60fps. But in this regard, NVIDIA has of course an ace up its sleeve and that is DLSS and frame generation. I tested a selection of games with the highest possible settings, including ray tracing when it's available and I would say the results speak for themselves once again. While I still do not have the necessary equipment to objectively measure fan noise, yet, subjectively I would say Lenovo managed to tame the 4090 without much of a problem. I took some samples for you in different scenarios, so you can get an idea of what to expect when it comes to fan noise and temperatures in different performance modes. Alright folks, this shall be it for today. So is the RTX 4090 worth it in the Legion Pro 7? If you get this one with an external screen in QHD or even 4K, I would personally say yes it is. For the most part you get exactly your money's worth of additional performance, and it seems like Lenovo puts the Legion on sale frequently, which might sweeten the deal even further. If you plan to use your machine for work as well, I would also say the bigger ADA card is worth the investment, since it helps you to get stuff done quite a bit faster. So what about the Y32P? Well, it definitely has its weak spots, especially in the brightness and contrast area, and PWM might be a no-go for some of you. Still, for a sub $1000 4K gaming panel, it might actually be a solid option, and it definitely makes for a very clean setup with the Legion. 
But please guys, let us know what you think. And please also let us know what you think about these videos in which we focus more on GPUs or external displays. Again, feel free to like the video and subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with our future uploads. Thanks a ton for watching, my name is Alex, you have been absolutely fantastic and I cannot wait to see you all in the next one. Take care.